Hey everybody, I hope everyone's having a wonderful day out there staying safe. I hope God's dwelling in your life, helping you out. Today's been a good day for me, and I hope it's been a good day for you. God gives many blessings, and just make sure you put Him first in your life, and you live a life for Him, just like we talked about yesterday, about the gold city of God, the city of God, and how it's gonna, we are going to be dwelling in that place, we as Christians, very few, but if we decide to follow Him, then we will be in that dwelling place. But today, we're going to be talking about God's wrath, His fury upon us. Now, God does have anger, but He uses anger to bring people to Him. And we should do the same thing, but we should look to God first before we do anything else. Because anger actually can teach somebody what they're doing wrong, especially if it's in God's eyes. But 99% of the time, anger is used in the wrong way. It's used to hate people. It's used to, to cause arguments, to stir up strife, to stir up things that are not good, to stir up sin. And that's not what we want. But when we look at anger, we want anger to be ours. In the correct way, we need to look to God's word first. Jesus was angry with the people in Jerusalem that they were worshiping money instead of God. They were in the house of God. They were in the temple of Jerusalem. And they were selling money and worshiping money instead of God. So Jesus got angry because these people are absolutely disobeying God and treating him like he's nothing. Which a lot of people in this world and this nation today do that. So today we're going to be in three books. We're going to be in Isaiah, Revelations, and Romans. So if everybody can turn to Isaiah, we're going to be in chapter 13, verse 9. Chapter 13, verse 9. Now listen carefully, guys. Because God wanted me to share with you guys, God wanted me to share the wrath of Him. Now the wrath is used in a way to destroy things. It says it all throughout Isaiah. And now I'm actually in Jeremiah. I've actually finished Isaiah. It was a really good book. And it talked a lot in Isaiah about God's wrath. Now is God's wrath used to kill people? No. Is God's wrath to absolutely desolate a city? Maybe. It depends. Now God's wrath is used to destroy wicked. And let's read this from what he's saying. He says, Behold the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof of it. So God's saying that he's going to go through with his anger and his wrath to destroy the wicked. And the wicked in this world today need the wrath of God. They need the power of God to dwell upon them. The problem with our country is we don't have any discipline. We don't, we, we're walking away from God. And, and in the Old Testament, that's all God did. He destroyed these evil nations. Now, he destroyed them in a merciful way. See, we use anger, but we don't use it in a merciful way. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. When Jesus went to Jerusalem, he got angry, but did he fight back? Did he start screaming at those people? No. He used it in a merciful way. He was trying to teach them a lesson. And when God destroys a wicked nation, he's trying to teach us a lesson. He said, either you accept my salvation or you don't. And when we read this verse one more time, and what God's trying to tell us is here, is that he uses his anger in a loving kindness way. And we need to do the same thing. We need to use our anger in a loving way to bring people in. But we can't do it unless if we look to God's anger. Because God's anger is perfect, and if we try to use His anger against people, it will lead people to Him. God's anger actually saved a lot of souls. He went in there and He absolutely desolated and said, and He was tired of all the wickedness they were doing. And some, some of them decided to change their ways. Some of them didn't care. And they felt they were going to keep falling into their own wickedness and go to hell. But we need to understand that God's trying to teach us a serious lesson here is that when we 
are ignoring him, we're absolutely ignoring everything he says. That when he comes with his anger and his wrath upon you, he's teaching you a lesson. He is teaching you and telling you to change. But he doesn't a uh, peaceful, loving, kind of way. He doesn't come in and just murder you. He comes in with loving and peace. He comes in with perfection with his anger and his fury. And let's read this verse one more time. It says, Behold the day of the Lord coming. For he's coming. He's coming with cruel both with wrath and fierce anger. So God is angry with these wicked people. We can freely see from this verse. To lay the land desolate, to destroy all the wickedness, to destroy it, absolutely turn it into dust. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof in it. Now when he says destroy the sinners, that doesn't mean he goes in and kills them all. He goes in there and he destroys their ways. Now, it does talk about many times in the Bible that God actually destroys nations with fire. So that means people actually have died. Not, It's not God's fault. He's not the one that killed them. It's we that killed ourselves. When God comes in with his anger, he wants you to change. At that moment. And if you don't, it's your fault. It's not God's fault. It's your fault that you die. And it's our fault that we ate from the tree of good and evil we weren't supposed to God told us not to we did it anyways and if we keep being disobedient to God and we keep ignoring his love and his mercy and his wrath then how are we supposed to get closer and we're gonna die in our own wickedness we're gonna go to hell what he does is God goes and he wakes these nations up for a reason he's trying to wake them up and said wake up and stop disobeying me and I'm telling you, if we do that, if we stand up as Christians and we be angry with the world in a loving, merciful way, if we do that, it would actually lead people to Christ. Just like Jesus led, Jesus led people to him when he flipped the table over when he was mad in Jerusalem. And it says, let's read verses before it. And it says, and they shall be afraid. God says they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their face shall be as flames. So God's telling us here he's going to do all these things to these people for their wickedness and their disobedience to God. But he's doing it in a loving, merciful way. He's trying to teach them. He's trying to wake them up so they understand the true power of God and they become a servant. And we should do the same thing. If we just sit around and we we um, go, we need to go in and we need to talk about the gospel in a hard and a, a little bit angry way. Because when we do that, it actually leads more people to Christ because it touches them and that they understand what they're doing wrong. And that's why in some of my videos I get a little a little bit um, angry, but in a loving kindness way because I'm trying to tell you guys how important it is. And I'm trying to do that here. That's why we need to look at God's wrath and use it in the right way. But the sad thing is that 99% of the time people use anger and is stirring up strife in an evil way. They don't even use it in a loving, kind way. Don't be angry with somebody just because they were mean with you. I love them. Be angry with them in a kind way, in a mercy way. Use God's word to help you on that. So let's go to Romans. Everybody turn to Romans. We're done with Isaiah. And he was talking about how he's going to run through and desolate and take all the sinners out of it. He's going to help them. He's going to change these people that are lost. For God wants us to change. And he, he has to sometimes wake us up. Because we keep ignoring and ignoring and ignoring. And if we hear God's word, we'll just keep ignoring it. But when God uses his anger and his wrath... And he gets a little bit angry and mad about it. Then it wakes them up and then it gets them closer. You get what I'm understanding? Is that some people don't care. But when they see the wrath and they see the power. They start to understand. So we're going to go to Romans chapter 12 verse 19. Romans chapter 12 verse 19. It says. Delirium beloved avenge. And yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, 
For it is written, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, saith the Lord. So vengeance and anger is only for the Lord. It's only for the perfect people. So that's why when we use anger, we use it by God's word. We don't use anger in our own way. Because God's telling us here, if we use anger in our own way, it's a sin. It's wrong. Well, if we use it in His way, it will lead us down the right path. 99% of the time, anger is used to scare people away, to use to make people mad. Even more anger stirs up. Well, if we use anger as a Christian, it would actually stir them up and get them closer to Christ. Because some people out there, they're looking for somebody. They're looking to be saved. But sometimes those people, they need to be yelled at. Those people need to have anger upon them. But you need to have it in a loving and a merciful way. Because if you do it in anger, from, not from God, it will not lead them to Christ. For God's wrath will. Because God's wrath wakes people up. And when we use that wrath from God, it wakes more people up. It leads people to Christ. But the sad thing is that most, Christ most Christians are failing on that. Sometimes they don't use wrath to put people to Christ. So we need to wake up people and start, start using wrath and stop doing what we want to do. For God wants us to go down the right path of victory, not the wrong path. And when he tells us to do this, we need to do it. And let's read it one more time. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Avenge not yourself. Avenge not yourself. That's what God's telling us. Don't have revenge or don't avenge on yourself. But rather give place until wrath. Give until anger from God. Until anger from God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. And I will repay, saith the Lord. God says that vengeance and anger is only his. He is the only one that has anger and vengeance that are allowed. It is the only perfect anger and vengeance from God. And when we use when we use vengeance and anger, it's wrong. But if we use God's vengeance, if we use God's wrath in his way, then it won't be a sin. See, God actually woke a lot of nations up and they turned from their sins. You know why? Because God had to literally go in and absolutely desolate everything and use his anger to wake them up so they understand. Or if God, if people sometimes, people don't care. Sometimes people won't listen when you go in their peace in a peaceful, nice way. But when you go into an angry and you use ang the angry wrath way in a peaceful way, it will wake them up more. They'll start to understand more. For some people are different. Maybe if you be peaceful, maybe they'll change right there. But when you're angry with them, and you're angry, and that you want them to change, and you use the word of God, it will change them, and they will understand. Sometimes people are so disobedient that they need to be yelled at to understand. They need to be yelled at. It's the truth. And you can see in, is in Isaiah, the book of Isaiah that I was reading, that it's always been like that. God had to go into nations and absolutely desolate and do everything impossible so he can wake those people up. It's not God's fault that everything is desolate. It's their fault because they kept disobeying God. Remember, we are the sinners. We are the ones that ate from the uh, tree of uh, good and evil. We are the ones that were tempted. We are the ones that committed sin. We are the ones that need a savior. So when God tells us to do this or that, he's telling the truth. That if we go to hell, it's our fault because we decided to disobey God. It's not God's fault. And if he tried to wake you up with wrath, he's trying to teach you a severe lesson. And that's what God is trying to teach us here. And that's what I'm trying to share with you guys today because you need to wake up. But when you listen to a pastor and maybe he's screaming or maybe he's angry and he's not happy about what's wrong with the nation, what's wrong with the world, he's trying to wake you up. And that's what God did throughout the entire Old Testament. 
It says in the Old Testament that God looked around and destroyed all kinds of nations. And he kept doing it, kept doing it. But the problem is, is people kept disobeying him. It wasn't working. The wickedness was just kept taking him over. So that's why he sent Jesus Christ to die for our sins. So we're able to, every, everyone's able to have a relationship with him now. Because he died and now his purpose is fulfilled. Does that mean God's wrath and anger is wrong? No, it's definitely not. But it means that he's not going to absolutely destroy a nation instantly just because they're wicked. Or you're destroying yourself if you keep going down the wicked ways. But we as Christians, we need to go to lost souls. And we need to be in a loving, kinding way, but using the wrath of God. If we use the wrath of God, it will wake people up. And God wants the same. For it is not a sin to use the wrath, uh, God's wrath. But it is a sin to use anger by yourself to hurt them. Now if you use God's wrath, but if you use it, use it in a hurtful way. And that's wrong. But if you use it in a peaceful, loving way to wake them up. Sometimes people need to be yelled at. Sometimes people need the full power of God on them. So they can change. Bro, there's a lot of disobedient people out there that are ignoring Christ. And they need to be absolutely screamed at. So God's, God's, God wants us to use His wrath. And we can read this verse one more time in Romans. It says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto the wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, saith the Lord. So vengeance, anger, and fury is only from God in a perfect way. It's only to wake people up. But 99% of the time, anger and vengeance is used to kill somebody, or it's used to break the Ten Commandments. It's used to break God's law. But if we use it, if we decide to look at the Word of God and say, hey, I'm going to use God's vengeance. I'm going to use God's fury. I'm going to use God's wrath. It will bring people to Christ. God uses His anger and His vengeance in a merciful way, not to hurt them, but to wake them up so they understand the full power of God. So if everybody can turn to Revelations, we're going to be in the New Testament, and we were in Romans. Still after Jesus Christ died on, this, on the cross, that in Revelations, it still talks about God's wrath. So it's still important, and we need to understand that if we do, it will lead us down the path of victory. And that's really what I'm trying to get out of you guys today is to use God's wrath only. Do not use your own wrath. Do not use your own wrath and your own anger. Do not use your own. Only use God's wrath. It's really what I'm trying to get out of you guys today is to use God's wrath to wake people up and lead them to Christ. Use God's wrath. It's important. It will wake people up. And that's why you see these people sometimes maybe screaming in a church. And they're really trying to get your attention. They're using their anger in a loving, peaceful way. So they bring you closer. You get what I'm trying to understand? So let's read this. Verse 19 of Revelation chapter. Um, verse 5. Revelation chapter 19 verse 5. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants. And ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard it with the voice of a great multitude as the voice of many waters as the voice of the mighty during saying hallelujah for the lord among the rangeth let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife had made herself ready let's read this again a voice came out of the throne saying praise our god all ye servants and ye that fear him, both small and great. So God's telling us here not only to be, his wrath is fearful. We need to fear God for his powerfulness. We need to fear his wrath. For his wrath is teaching us a lesson to understand the true power. Let's go into prayer, everybody. I thank you all for watching my videos. And God, I ask that you touch hearts. There's a lot of people out there that need Christ, and we need to use your wrath in a loving, peaceful way, in a merciful way. 
Help us not to use that 99% anger in an evil way, but to use that 1% anger to lead people to Christ. Because some people need to wait, be waked up. Some people are very stubborn and they need the Lord on them. And Lord, I ask that you love everyone because I know you do. You're merciful upon us, God, and you gave your son Jesus Christ. You destroyed all kinds of nations of desolation. You destroyed the wicked in the Old Testament. And you taught them the path of victory by using your wrath and your fear and your vengeance. Not in a mean way and not in a killing way. But in a merciful and a loving kindness way to show them the true power. And some of them woke up and some of them did decide to ignore it. For it's our fault that sin exists. For it's our fault if we get a hell. It's our, salt, our fault when we commit a sin. It is not your fault. So when you use your wrath, you're trying to wake us up. To show us the true power. And help us to do the same to others. To use your wrath and our wrath to show other people the power of Christ. To lead them to Christ. Help us, God, to spread the gospel in a wrathful way. So we understand the true power of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys for watching. We need to understand that God wants us a lot. He wants us to do amazing things. And if we sit around and we wait... We can't. We have a lot of work to do, to do because Jesus is coming for his church real soon. We hear that awesome trumpet of God and I can't wait. It's going to be so awesome. But we need to be alert. and we need, we need to use God's wrath in a loving kindness way to wake people up. Because there is a lot of lost people out there that need Jesus Christ. And if we wake them up, then they'll understand. If we don't use wrath, and some people won't listen because they don't care. But if we use wrath, then it will get their heart more. It will get their soul more. It will get their mind more. They'll understand more of Christ. For, all, for we are all able to be forgiven for our sins. Even the lost souls can be forgiven. Just like I was a lost soul once. But I have been saved and now I'm doing things for God. And I'm living a joyful, peaceful life. And I'm going to keep using God's wrath to lead people to Christ. Have a good day. God bless everyone. Stay on God. Stay in His Word. Every decision and every step that you walk is for God. That's what I want you guys to do. To use His wrath. To use His vengeance. To use His fury in a godly manner. To use it to bring people to Christ. Don't use it to hurt people. For that will just make everything worse. Anyways, have a good day. God bless. Stay safe. God's wrath will lead people to Christ. Peace out.